Okay. I keep saying at the beginning of every video, I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I should probably stop doing that, right? Um, depth in your photography. What do you mean depth? All pictures are two-dimensional. Yeah, bitch, and a hologram is also two-dimensional. <laughs> you kind of see, you know, why people buy, like, most of you, by the way, have never seen a true art hologram. I've got some of them behind the camera there. You see, like, the hologram on your credit card, you're like, oh, that's a hologram. No, girlfriend, you ain't never seen a real hologram. A real one will smack you right in the face. It'd be like, uh... It'd be like, uh... <laughs> it'd be like, I don't know, some chick seeing a John Holmes movie for the first time is like, whoa, my God, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that was too much. Um, yeah, that's what she said, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Um, depth. <laughs> Luminal depth and spatial depth. This is a subject nobody's ever written about. You won't find it in any photography book. Why? I have no idea. People are stupid, apparently. Um, <laughs> well, they're not as smart as I think they are, anyway. Luminal depth, micro contrast, and lens rendered depth, i.e. phase disparity and binocular disparity. Micro contrast is incredibly important. By the way, if you are a black and white shooter, and or you love to shoot black and white, and you don't know what uh, micro contrast is, then you're an idiot. But even if you don't really want to know everything about micro contrast, if you are a black and white shooter, and you don't know what lens has really good micro contrast, it's just like shooting yourself in the foot. I mean, it is just stupid. You could like be the best photographer out there. You, you choose a lens that has crap micro contrast. It's like, wow, the composition is awesome. And, you know, it's just there's something missing about this picture, you know? It is insanely important for black and white photography. It's, it's important for every type of photography, not just black and white, but especially so. When you get all those, we used to call this back in photography film days, and God, I've shot more film than God. We used to talk, talk about a silver print, where you'd see all these intermediate tonal details, which made like a hologram. It's like, well, you know, it's two-dimensional. That's not the point. It's the perceived depth into the picture that actually sucks you in. When you have a picture that is flat, like a snapshot, it's flat. Okay, listen closely. This is important. It's like, that shot is flat. It looks like a snapshot out of an Olympus point and shoot. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't suck you in. You notice how flat things don't suck you in? What does suck you in? You ever stick your face up to a, a vacuum cleaner before? There's uh, my rich buddy calling from Europe. I'm going to decline that call. Yeah, he's on vacation touring Europe. It must be so awesome to be a multi, multi millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> you ever stick your face up to a vacuum cleaner and you get sucked in? Or you ever like lean over into a tub as a child and you like fell into the tub? <laughs> Micro contrast. It's like, well, every print. And I argue with people on this, and they're so dumb. It's like, every print is two dimensional. I don't know what you mean about depth. It's like, you really don't? I wish most of you people could actually have your hands on a true art hologram. Not the crap on your credit card, but a true art hologram. They will blow your balls right off. They're like, oh my god. Woo, I didn't know stuff like this existed. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're that good. A true photograph with great micro contrast is just like leaning over the tub. You just fall right in. Or sticking your face up to the vacuum cleaner, then the nozzle, and you go, Whoosh. I know everybody's done that at some point in time, right? Okay. Rendered depth. This is why it's so important to have one of those if you're a black and white photographer. Phase disparity. I'm going to get into a tremendous amount of the details because your eyes will roll back in the back of your head. I'm going to keep this really simple. I could get into extreme detail on this, but I just end up boring the crap out of people. You have luminal depth and you have spatial depth. The depth of a rendering as far as bokeh and the illumination rendering based upon the contour, geometric separation of the subject and how it's illuminated or like the diffuse values and the speculars and the it's like if you're shooting noonday sun everything's just beating down it's perfectly illuminated but you give some uh, you use a grid 
on a studio strobe and you give some edge definition to the face, it's like, wow, I'm actually sucked into this picture. It actually has true depth. Um, seven attributes of depth. I'm going to go over each one of them really quickly. And I'm going to talk about each one of them. Translational or perceptual depth, rendered depth, uh, compressional depth, compositional depth, meaning lighting also, and then uh, bokeh depth, bokeh, bokeh, I don't care which one you say. There's also 14-bit depth. There's electrical depth, also in the type of... Uh, and now we're having, uh, we're getting into 16-bit uh, 80 conversion. Like with phase one, it used to be like 10 versus 12. Now it's uh, 12 versus 14. And then we're going to go to, pretty soon we'll be at like 16-bit uh, depth. 16-bit uh, uh, on, uh, the, on the, the file, the AD conversion. Uh, larger photo site depth, we have a much better signal-to-noise ratio. This is electrical depth, by the way. There's actually electrical depth, and then there's perceived depth. And uh, translational or perceptual. By the way, if you want to deny the fact that, uh, that uh, dimensionality you know, uh, exists, I mean, it's like, well, every picture is two-dimensional, whether it's on a screen or printed out. It's like, no, you're an idiot. And I've had a lot of people tell me that. It's like, what do you mean depth? It's just a two-dimensional image. <laughs> you ever seen any of those master artists actually draw on the sidewalk? They're so really good at it that they'll make it look like there's like a 30-foot chasm there and there's like something inside that hole. There'll be people walking along the sidewalk and they'll get the shit scared at them because they think they're about to fall into a big hole. They're still walking on the same sidewalk. Okay? That's the way the brain works. It's the same way optical illusions work. It's the same way every illusionist tricks people with their illusions. They think all sorts of radical crap is going on when it isn't. It's just the way the brain works. We're hardwired to see depth in things that we know that ultimately are two-dimensionally flat. You know, So don't ever tell me again about a picture being two-dimensional. Okay? Don't ever tell me that crap again because if you say that, you're just making an ass out of yourself. You know, if you want to talk about depth, walk around all day with one of your eyes taped shut and experience the suck factor of the lack of binocular disparity. Oh my god, look at that. Light being out of phase on these low element count prime lenses is the reasons why the pictures look so deep and the micro contrast is so good. When you add too much glass in, it's like taking a filet mignon piece of meat and processing it and processing it. It just comes out like McDonald's hamburger. You know, you won't be able to tell the difference between a fine filet mignon and a McDonald's hamburger if you process the meat enough and over and over and over again. It's like you've gone from a $1 McDonald's hamburger from an $18 piece of filet mignon. It's the same thing with light. There's no denying that. You're not going to argue it with me because you'll lose... You want to debate that with me? That is a fight you ain't never going to win. I'll crush you on it. Um, translational perceptual depth. The higher the micro contrast, the better the perceived depth and detail. I could go into that in great detail, but I just am boring the hell out of you. Rendered depth. The binocular depth from the low element count prime lenses or the foreground and background disparity that layers the separate objects within the distance of the composition. It has to do with phase and the elemental phasing, the actual way the lens is constructed, and the type of ED glass that is used. Um, rendered depth. And then we've got the binocular disparity and the phase disparity. Yeah. Compressional depth, the longer or shorter focal length. We kind of know what that means. The compositional depth, the lighting. You know, you use a light, as I mentioned before in a prior video, for saturation, isolation, and compression. You know, the one thing that defines like a shitty looking... I, mean, I could take the most expensive camera and lens and take a shitty looking snapshot picture. It's about lighting, damn it. More important than the lens is really good lighting, okay, and how you light your subject. The specular, the diffuse gradation between the highlights, the diffuse, and the shadows, where it actually falls, the definition that it's actually given, that's a form of depth. Another one is obviously bouquet depth. We kind of understand what that is. 14-bit depth I've already gone in into. Larger photo site for better signal-to-noise ratio. We have the micro contrast depth and the rendered depth and the compositional depth. One is electrical and optical. Uh, the rendered depth due to lens construction is purely electrical. If you think a lens is anything other than a type of circuitry 
that it uses glass, which by the way is a dielectric capacitor. If you think a lens is anything other than an electrical circuit which refracts and bends light, then you're an idiot because you know, all these lens companies, they add these special elements to their ED glass and even their regular, like Zeiss lenses are so heavy because there's lead in there. Lens has a certain dielectric permittivity that changes the nature by which light passes through it. There is like a list of 40 different compounds used to use heavily radioactive stuff that changes the nature of way light. If, if, if light had nothing, it was only strictly based upon the refractive properties of glass, then every lens ever made would just been glass, high quality glass that is, you know, coated, of course, for anti reflectance. But no, there's all these secret recipes that every lens manufacturer, they add this freaky deaky crap in there, like lead, and they used to use um, um, radioactive materials you don't use anymore. You use neodymium, and uh, they use various oxide compounds in the glass. It changes the dielectric permeability and mag uh, dielectric permittivity, magnetic permeability of the nature of light as it passes through the glass. And why the hell do you think they stick that freaky crap in the glass? The elements in inside any glass lens, whether it's Fuji, Nikon, Canon, Zeiss, or Leica, it is not just glass. There are like a billion different ways you can make glass. And there are thousands and thousands of secret recipes these lens companies use. Like, well, what sort of elements are there? It's an ED element. Well, that doesn't mean anything. There's like a thousand different ways you can make an ED element with lead, with niobium oxide, lanthanum dioxide, all sorts of freaky additive. Why the hell do you even think they stick that crap in the glass anyway? Oh, let's just stink. Uh, let's uh, throw some of this freaky deaky crap in the molten glass. You know, why, do you, why the hell do you think they do that? It changes the nature by which the light is rendered finally falling upon the sensor as it passes through those many different glass elements. Why the hell do you think they add that stuff? Why does no photography magazine ever talk about this? Why don't the, like, the morons at some of these uh, web uh, portals for uh, photography information, why the hell don't you think they talk about it? I mean, none of them do. Not Petapixel, not anybody. What the hell are they smoking? Just make one article about it and, like, spark people's imagination. It's like, you know, there's all sorts of these little nifty compounds that are added to glass because light is an electrical circuit, and a lens is an electrical circuit. You know, I could talk about this just endlessly, but nobody wants to hear about it. It's like, I don't care, you know. It just doesn't. Well, half of photography is science. The rest of it is art. Actually, most of it is art. But, you know, you got to have the science in there somewhere. And if you're a black and white shooter and you don't know what the hell a good micro contrast lens is, you are just shooting yourself in the foot. Period. It's like, I don't know. I'm just going to do really good black. Do you have a lens with really good micro contrast? Because if you don't, no matter how good your photographs are, they're never going to be that, ooh, wow, damn. They're never going to be at that level because the inner tonal details won't be there. It won't be there. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Oh, bye.